Democrat debates. It's a very, very controlled process. running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. I might as well just... president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life vitamin B12 formulation. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News live coverage of the Democrat debate, the very first Democrat debate. One, however, of only six debates. These are going to be very rare. I'm David Knight. Joining me are Leanne McAdoo and Joe Biggs. We're going to be giving you live commentary as the debate unfolds on CNN. Now, if you're aware of this debate at all, you are in the minority. As we learned from a Reuters poll today, only 45% even of registered Democrats know about this debate. That's how much of a secret it is. Nevertheless, it's been constantly promoted by CNN. We had CNN News anchor Brooke Baldwin say, you can feel the excitement building here. <laughs> Except nobody is watching because nobody is watching CNN. So we're trying to get the information out there. We're trying to do our best to help CNN here, but maybe, I guess, to get their ratings up. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> I think they chose that. <laughs> interesting that they had a record crowd, a record audience with the last GOP debate. It had nothing to do with CNN's power as a network. It had everything to do with Donald Trump. And Donald Trump isn't going to be in the Democrat debate tonight. <laughs> so uh, this is going to be interesting to see. It will be interesting, I think, to see what happens with the minor candidates that nobody's heard from, because I think they will come out swinging. I don't know so much about uh, Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, I think they're going to play it kind of safe. But maybe these other guys, they understand, I think, that this is their only chance to really get an audience. Right, they've got to take some of those dwindling poll numbers away from Hillary. And of course, the only way she's going to come out uh, on top, I guess, is if she gets aggressive and doesn't just play with her canned answers like normal, because mm -hmm. people aren't buying it anymore. I think she's going to come out swinging. I mean, She's been attacked from every side possible. I think this is, she probably is gonna feel like this is gonna be her last chance to really get her message across on a large scale to see if she can grab some uh, last minute voters. But you know, for the most part, people aren't buying it. You yeah. know, yeah. I, I'm interested to see just how out of control her answers are gonna be. I mean, it's just gonna be mind blowing to hear some of these answers to these questions. And yeah. plus, I wanna find out if they're actually gonna ask real questions to the candidates, unlike they did the first time in the GOP debate, where it was kind of like, you know, let's stage these little fights and bickerings between one another. Well, well they did that deliberately in the GOP debate. Jake mm -hmm. Tapper said that he was deliberately going to mix that up, and he did. It was very much a tabloid debate, but Anderson Cooper says, 
these are serious candidates and right. these are serious issues that they're going to talk about. So we need to throw them softballs yeah. because serious ball players like softballs tossed to them. That's right. What, now, one of the things you need to understand, we all understand that this is a horse race. We all understand that this is a distraction from things that are really going to change your life. But you also need to understand the strategy of thinking globally, thinking nationally, and acting locally. Understand that this is all a distraction to keep you from doing anything where it's really going to make a difference. That's at the local level, at the state level, where you can contain the federal government. They want you to get involved in the uh, horse races that you're going to have the least impact, and that would be the presidential race. Right. But it's still important to see what they're saying. Understand that Hillary Clinton, I think, in my opinion, is probably one of the most ambitious people in American history. That's not a good thing. Her ambition has made her ruthless. Remember that as first lady, she tried to take over health care pretty much single-handedly, tried to nationalize it. Now, that has been done with Barack Obama, but still we need to, and you can also understand, I think, where they're going with this. Because we know that the Republican leadership, people like Boehner, even though he says he's going to be leaving, he's going to find a replacement just like right. him. People like Boehner, people like McConnell, they are going to push this statist, centralized agenda that you're going to hear tonight in this debate. They're going to be pushing that towards you. They're going to say that they're against it. But they're going to be working behind the scenes to advance this agenda. So you need to look at this to see where everything is headed. You need to understand, look at it as an intelligence gathering uh, mission. Look at it as another way that you can learn how to connect with people. See how they're trying to connect with the masses so you can understand how to communicate the ideas of liberty, not of centralization and control that these people are selling. Absolutely. And I'm excited to see what some of the more obscure <laughs> candidates up there have to say. Everyone's kind of like, who is Jim Webb? Who is this other guy, Lincoln Chaffee? And mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we'll see, because they really do build it up. They, they pick their horses, and then they, yes. you know, everything yeah. is geared toward them in the race. Yeah, we've got three candidates who basically are at zero in the poll. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that... Uh, we will see some interesting moves from O'Malley. Of course, he was the mayor of Baltimore, then became the governor of Maryland. He is pushing an agenda that's really not that much different from Bernie Sanders, really. They're all pushing an agenda of uh, national service. Well, I would say with the exception of, of Webb, they're pushing an agenda of national service. Go into national service and you can get your tuition paid for. Or in the case right. of Bernie Sanders, he wants to give everybody free tuition. That's simply about keeping the youth occupied because they have exported our jobs and they have imported workers. And so we have depression era unemployment amongst our youth. So what do you do? Well, you keep them busy. You give them make work projects. You send them to, to college where they can be thoroughly indoctrinated into political correctness. And then you say, if you'll go to work for the government, we'll pay for your college. Otherwise, you're going to be an indentured servant. You won't be able to dismiss that massive debt even by declaring bankruptcy. Right, well, it's kind of like the the story tonight with the students, the eighth graders in, in Germany who are being trained now to go and clean up after the migrants because that is their work experience mm -hmm. that they're getting. This is their future now. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Free <laughs> what happens and Guys, that was economy. something that Obama's been doing with his work core and all of, you know, he had yeah. those commercials when he first started, I am fierce, all that with with all the, the youth. And um, I was in uh, New Orleans at one time and we actually saw some of these groups getting together and they really bought into the whole government thing. If I do this work service now, then I can go and work for very little money out of college, but then they'll pay for my college back. And you may or not get that, you know, that real work service in there. Mm -hmm. Well, and of course, they want everybody to be beholden to the government. You either work for the government or you're dependent on the government for your money. And that's the, the key thing is that they want to keep that dependency. Right. They want everybody to work for the government. The only people, the only sector that's expanding now, of course, is the government sector. If right. you want a high paying job, go to work for the government. That's the reality of the situation right now. That's not the way it should be. And that's all these young people pushing for, for right. that socialism where the government owns everything, is in control of everything because they've done such a great job. I don't know why the youth are being so duped in. Yeah, into all you have this. to do is this walk on the work. campus, like a, a major college campus, and see all these socialist signs everywhere. everywhere. Oh, yeah. Socialist meetup groups for socialists and that. I mean, it's. They, they want to tear down the, the Confederate flag and raise the hammer and sickle, like well, replace one with another. It's the longer you stay in school, the more leftist you turn because they constantly push that political correctness. And the students don't really understand that that is a tool of mind control, a mm -hmm. fog of semantics that they push with political correctness. 
And that's what makes it so dangerous. And that's why the Democrats are all pushing some kind of stay in college forever plan. It also, as I pointed out, there's, there's no jobs for anybody. So that's one way that you try to control unrest. That's to keep everybody in some kind of a government institution. Oh, God, there she is. Yeah, there's Hillary. There this we go. is going to be the worst part of this two hours for me. <laughs> well, you know, there's, there's a lot of fighting going on within the Democrat Party because there are so few debates. And remember that Hillary Clinton, in spite of the fact that she's recognized as a front runner, in spite of the fact that she's the only presidential candidate in either party that has Secret Service protection, that's how much they think of her chances of winning. Uh, that's Jim Webb coming on there. In spite of all of that, she only had her first live campaign appearance on September 17th, not even a month ago. That was with Wolf Blitzer on CNN. And she was famously asked the question, can you name an accomplishment? And she drew a blank. <laughs> wow. And this is something that people have been saying repeatedly for at least a year now. What has she accomplished? Her own uh, supporters couldn't even name one thing she accomplished. You would think she would have had that. She's good at networking. Yeah. yeah. She yeah. can set up secret servers. She, she's, she's definitely very got that good under at control. Setting. Well, actually, she's not very good at setting it up. Yeah. Apparently it was a do a very good run job by a bunch She's of not very hacks. good at keeping it secret, that's for sure. She can definitely uh, <laughs> set them up and keep them in her house. And I guess she understands how air conditioning works to keep them cool. <laughs> yeah. But uh, keeping the Hiding the bodies. And exactly. There was an article about uh, Bernie Sanders and they uh, said five words that tell you why Bernie Sanders, Sanders will not become uh, president. And uh, he was asked what he thought about capitalism. And he said, well, I'm a Democratic socialist. And uh, even the people on the left said, uh, that isn't going to sell in the general election. And I don't think it is. Now, on some issues, Bernie Sanders is good. He opposes the Patriot Act. He opposes the out of control NSA. I don't know that we'll have any questions on that. We don't seem to ever have any substantive questions. I wonder if they will ask the Democrats what they would like for their nickname to be uh, from the Secret Service like they did the Republicans. That was <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. Ask some questions. Anytime I ever see someone with a Bernie Sanders sticker on, it's usually a college kid. Yeah. He seems to have a very large, trendy college, you know, crowd thus far. Yeah. Well, those are the uh, selfies, getting, getting um, plastic surgery selfie selfies. Selfie lineals. <laughs> yeah, the selfie lineals. That's our, that's our domestic product. Did you see Hillary Clinton's face just a moment ago as she was looking up at the flag there? Look at her. Oh. <laughs> she's looking for a teleprompter she's because so she doesn't know the words of the song. <laughs> I think she's searching for her heart and she can't find it. Uh, <laughs> looking to see where she can put her hand. It's and don't forget, guys, people it. people can join us on Twitter at hashtag Dim Debate and also at Real Alex Jones. And I think uh, Darren McBreen is over in the Twitter area ready to uh, to tell us what's going on. What's going on in the Twitter station there, Darren? That's right. Darren McBreen here in the Twitter booth or the Twitter room, if you will, here at the InfoWars studios deep behind enemy lines. Look, if you want to send us your questions at Twitter, go, uh, at Twitter, go to at Real Alex Jones. And the hashtag is Dem Debate. D-E-M debate, because Dem Democrats are pushing the socialist agenda. <laughs> and, you know, we want to know, tell us what you think about Hillary Clinton, the rest of the candidates. Tell us what you think about the socialist Bernie Sanders. And I'm also curious what you think about what happened yesterday to Donald Trump. One of Jeb Bush's interns infiltrated a Donald Trump event, and it looks like Jeb Bush got busted big time. It's all over the news, so I'm curious what you guys think about that. Look, I'm going to be here all evening. Um, I guess Joe Biggs is going to be joining me later. Also, Infor's reporter Kit Daniels. So once again, at Real Alex Jones, hashtag Dem Debate. Yeah, I think that's one of the most uh, interesting things that's happened in the last several days, and that was that amateurish, transparent trolling of Donald Trump by that Jeb Bush operative. Right. Absolutely amazing. And uh, Travis found a picture of the guy sitting next to her, and he's a known troll. Uh, <laughs> he, was, uh, he was sitting there next to her with his a ID stuck prankster. in his pocket. It's yeah. like, you know, what, what am I doing? And, and, uh, and he was looking away from her, looking away from Trump, and like looking all around like yeah. this. I mean, la, la, something la. was really up with that. I don't know uh, what that was about. Yeah, but, I'm sure uh, there's a... I got busted. There, there's probably a YouTube video somewhere of some prank that he pulled or question that he asked in the crowd, but... Just the way CNN took that and ran with it, uh, yes. you know. Oh, look at this! Yes. This angry woman. This is this is the GOP. This is how women feel about the GOP, and it's it's not I mean, even. They took the accurate. organ shooter and made him white. 
Yeah. This is true. Yeah. I mean, this is you true. can't put this anything past them. Well, it is the CIA news network. And, they, and Anderson, yeah. Anderson Cooper. Mockingbird Anderson Cooper. Cooper. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Who is also a global uh, Clinton Global Initiative. Oh, yeah. One of their noble, distinguished yeah. members. There. He's the guy who's going to treat this debate with the utmost seriousness after they did the uh, uh, yeah. hokey uh, soap opera debate.